Hello everyone. For Glue Book January 2022, I am putting together a scavenger hunt. And some of the items on the lists are things that you need to do to get a scribble, a doodle, a drawing. So I thought I would come and describe some of those things just in case somebody is not quite sure what I mean by some of the items. So I thought I would do a little demo of, of some of the things. Um, if you've watched some of my live streams, I do a lot of these things often. Um, but if you're new, welcome. And here is just a, a basic description of some of those stuff. All right, so if you are looking for the lists and the details for Glue Book January 2022, The Scavenger Hunt, there's a playlist uh, link in the description box below, and it'll give you all the videos so that you can see what's going on. All right, let's just get on with the demo. All right, so I've got a list of a few of the things that might be you know, hard to understand. Um, one of them is a scribble. Let me get some paper out here. A scribble. I mean, it's just, you know, whatever. Get a pencil and do a scribble. I like to use scribbles in backgrounds of collages. Um, it's just a scribble. A doodle or a drawing. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be a, a drawing of a teacup. You can go get your kids to, you know, make a doodle of a cat. Draw a cat for me. Use that. You've done that part, all right? Um, a mark from a red pen. Red pen, you know, teachers like to put, uh, a, you know, A plus on papers when they're grading. That would be a mark from a red pen. Or you might want to just doodle. It's a mark from a red pen. Really, really easy. Okay. A doodles can be anything. You know, they can be stuff that you're doing while you're on hold on the phone or whatever. You know, there are no rules. You can interpret these prompts any way that you want to interpret them. There's no wrong way to do any of them. All right. Uh, the next one is a crayon rubbing. Now, I like to find uh, something that's got a texture, a stencil, a stamp. I have a texture on this bottle, something that's raised. Lego board here. Um, anything that has a texture. And I do use wax crayons for this. You can use any kind of crayons, water soluble crayons, whatever you have. And all you need to do is find a piece of paper that's not too thick so that you can feel the texture underneath the paper. And I take the wrappers off my crayons so that I can use the flat part and make a rubbing of that texture. A lot of times, and I do have a video showing what you can do with the crayon rubbings, uh, I put inks or watercolor over the wax. It acts as a resist and then makes a really cool painted paper. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you can use a stencil. or anything that has a texture. Anything. This bottle has a really cool texture. Some circles. I like to use the flat part of a crayon. The tip sometimes goes into the texture and you don't get quite as good of a, a, a rubbing. All right. So that is a crayon rubbing. All right. Next one is a shoe bottom stamp. If you've seen any of my live streams when I used to live stream, I don't live stream anymore. Um, 
I really enjoy the patterns on the bottoms of shoes. Love them. These are some flip-flops that I've had for quite some time. My favorite flip-flops. Um, if you go to your closet and look at your shoes, a lot of them have some really cool patterns to them. Kids' shoes especially. Really cool patterns. So all I do is use an ink pad, ink up the bottom of the sh shoe or flip-flop, whatever you've got, and use it like a stamp. Just like that. Now, if you're using somebody else's shoe, you may want to make sure you clean off that ink really well so they don't traipse ink all over the carpet or whatever, not knowing that there's ink on the bottoms of their shoes. I put these in my little toy box so that I can use them whenever. That is a shoe bottom stamp. Really fun to do. All right. Um, a stenciled pattern. You guys, you know how to do a stenciled pattern. Any stencil, any pattern. Do it any way you want to do it. Perfect, perfect. All right. All right. Uh, let's go to paper bead. I'm sure a lot of you made paper beads as kids, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need a strip of paper, and I'm using a really short piece of paper. I don't want my bead to be real thick. The longer the piece of paper, the thicker the bead. If I'm putting it in a book, I don't want it to be really, really, really thick. And I use a straw to wrap. You can use a toothpick or anything. Just keep in mind that whatever you're wrapping your paper around, that's as, as wide as the hole is going to be in your paper bead. All you need to do is, and of course I like to make one end of my paper a little bit thicker than the other end. And I start off with the thick end and just start wrapping it around. Use a little bit of glue. This is thick paper, so I'm probably going to need a big dose of glue. Something stronger than glue stick, I think. But it'll, it'll work for now. And glue that little end down. Take the straw or whatever you're wrapping around, take it out, and you've got, I've got ink all over my hands, you've got a paper bead. These are fun to do with the kids if you've not done them or if you haven't done, done them in a while. Um, I might just flatten mine out so it will fit in the book. I might make it quite not quite so thick. I want a thin little paper bead. I'll deal with that later. All right, so that's a paper bead. Oh, I'm going to have ink all over everything as I touch it. All right, let me see if I can wipe some of this off. All right, so the next one is... Stitching. Okay, of course, it's not going to come off. Oh well. Oh well. Stitching. Um, a lot of people are doing that slow stitching nowadays. Um, you can do slow stitching on paper, on fabric. You can find stitching on clothes. You know, cut out a little bit of jeans, getting rid of something. Um, there's some stitching on a purse or whatever, you know, take that stitching and glue it on your page. Do some slow stitching yourself. Uh, whatever. You can use fancy stitches. You can just go in and out. You can use a sewing machine. You can do it on paper. You can do it on fabric. Like I said, no wrong way to do any of it. Just go ahead and glue a little bit of stitching to your page. All right. Tassel. You can find ready-made tassels or you can make a little tassel on your own any way you want to do it. Spirograph. If you don't have a spirograph, they are so much fun. 
I recommend them highly. I've got three. Spirograph. Um, I do the Spirograph circles on all kinds of different papers, book text and, you know, color paper, whatever. And then I rip them up and use them as little bits of background. Um, they're a lot of fun to do. I can spend a whole afternoon just making spirograph patterns. And they don't have to be perfect. If you mess up on, on the pattern, you're never going to know. You're ripping the paper up anyway. It's just uh, a cool background bit. So if you don't have one, borrow it from the kids, borrow it from your neighbor, where, whatever. All right? Spirograph is a lot of fun. Um, and while I'm here, let's do nail polish. It's fingernail polish. Um, you can use nail polish. I like the nail polish that has glitter or little bits in it. Um, and I just, I haven't used this in a while. I can't even open it. But I just use the brush that comes with it and brush it right on paper. Here I've done some on this paper, some gold, I guess, and it dries nicely. It's still bendable. Um, I do it outside because it kind of stinks. It stinks a lot, um, but I can put it right on paper. If you don't have nail polish, go ahead and find an image of nail, nail polish. Both things work. You still found it. A math problem. You might have an old textbook that you want to rip apart, or the kids' homework, or a, a piece of paper that you've done the math for your checkbook, or whatever. Any kind of math problem. You can write out a math problem. One plus one equals two. You have a math problem. Really easy. Handwriting. Anything. You have a letter from your grandmother, got the shopping list, homework again. Um, this one I wrote in a circle. I think I did it for a junk journal. It can be anything. You can write out something. You can get somebody else to, to write something and use that. It's great. It's great background paper. All right. Handmade stamp. I have a few videos on making handmade stamps. I make handmade stamps from Fun Foam, from O-Rings. I do found stamps. Um, I, I like making my own stamps. Um, and I've got quite a few of them. So you can make them from cork. You can make them from O-Rings. You can glue them on milk carton, whatever. Make any kind of stamp. If you want to see the videos, they're in, um, they're, they're somewhere. Making handmade stamps. Let's do circles. triangle. Um, they're fun to have. They're fun to use. The Fun Foam makes really good stamps. That's one of my favorite ways to make stamps is the children's Fun Foam you get at um, you get at the um, at craft stores in the kids section. So, easy, easy. Any kind of handmade stamp, maybe even a found stamp, anything, anything. All right. Where are we on my list? Embossed image. You can do embossing with the embossing plates, the tool, 
or you can do embossing with the powder and heat tool um, whatever you have whatever you want to do these are I, I like I like doing these I usually do it on a cold day and get the heat gun out and do quite a few of them um, just any embossed image you could even find an embossed image maybe on an invitation or or something like that they do a lot of embossing for um, greeting cards and, and that kind of thing so whatever you can find let's see where am I on the list again labels I couldn't find my can labels I have I like spinach. I like Popeye spinach because there's Popeye on the label. A lot of vegetables have the Jolly Green Giant bottle labels. If you're using a wine label to get it off, use a heat tool to loosen up the, the glue. It works really well. Any kind of bottle label, you know, ketchup or, or whatever you, you've got. Packaging. I've got the soda can box. This one is Kleenex. I like to take the painted part of the paper off the cardboard. It's a little bit thinner, easier to glue onto my page. Um, it's just something that I do. Here is Walmart brand butter. I like the little cows. It's pa packaging. If you take a look at your packaging, you may see things that you don't really realize that are, are there. Um, there's a lot of images on, on packaging. It doesn't have to be food. It can be, you know, craft tools or, or whatever. You know, just find some kind of image, something that you like the looks of, maybe a pattern or something like that, and just use that. So that's bottle labels. Um can labels, packaging, lottery ticket paper. Now that can be lottery tickets that are used or whatever, just the little bits of it, or it can be that paper that you choose your numbers with. I love this stuff. I think it looks great in books, in backgrounds, that kind of thing. Um, this is lottery ticket paper. This is what I call lo lottery ticket paper. I'm sure it's got a fancy name. don't know what it is. But that's what that is. Um, puzzle pieces. I buy puzzles from the Dollar Tree and use them in my collage. I do take off quite a few layers of the cardboard to make it easier to glue the bits to my page but puzzle pieces are actual puzzle pieces. Could be puzzles like word search, Sudoku, crossword puzzles. It could be that as well. Um, this is a calendar page. So I've got the puzzle itself and then um, the back has that part so um, I can use both of them calendar, desk calendar, the wall calendar that you tear apart you don't have to use the whole thing for your bits alright just a little bit of, of whatever we've got paper punch now a lot of people have paper punched images. I've got images, paper punches. Um, some people don't. If you've just got a circle or a square, or even if you have just one of those corner, round corner ones, you can make a rounded corner square. Um, anything like that. Just any kind of paper punch. Use it any way you want to use it. Confetti. This confetti came from a Mardi Gras parade. And it's pretty big. It's pretty big stuff. But you can use 
the smaller type of confetti. Just put some matte medium down on the page, sprinkle the confetti on little tiny little bits, and let it dry. Any kind of confetti. You can make confetti with a paper punch. Really easy. Crayon wrapper. I do like to take the wrappers off my crayons. It makes it easier to do crayon rubbings when the papers are off so I can use the flat edge. So sometimes they're not quite as easy to get off as you would think, but they're fun to use. A crayon wrapper. Color book page. You've got those color books that you haven't used all the pages, you know, tear one of those out. Use a little bit of, of it for a background. Color book page is good. All right. Game piece. Board game. Part of a board game or a bingo card. Again, I like to tear them apart so I can use both sides. Game pieces. Board game pieces. Monopoly and Clue are my favorites. I like the Community Chest, the Chance, all the cards that have to do with the games uh, I like to use. Clue has the, um, the suspects and all that stuff. I usually tear those apart so they're easy to glue down. The Money. Got to use the Money. Um... Memory games. I love the little cards with those. So I like to take the cardboard off. Like I, I just do not like thicknesses of stuff. And usually they're pretty easy to get off when they're started. So they're much easier to glue down. And I take the bottom or the, the back side off as well. I've got something striped to use. And just throw that away. All right. So any kind of board game bit. Playing cards. I like different size playing cards. And again, this is just a normal playing card. I got this brand at the Dollar Tree, and I do like to tear them apart. Then I have the back side and the front side I can use. This brand from the Dollar Tree comes apart very, very easily. Some cards are a little harder to tear apart. But, you know, and you don't have to use the whole card. You can use just part of the card. So that's playing cards and something from a board game. A paint swatch can be um, the thing that you get from the hardware store to show you what, your, what the colors are. Or if you swatch out your watercolors or any kind of paint, you can use those as well. Calendar page. Um, I showed the calendars, wall calendar, or or whatever. Um, cupcake wrappers. I enjoy cupcake wrappers a lot. I buy them when I see a pattern that I like. They're really easy to just flatten out. They're just circles. And then you can use part of it or um, the whole thing in your collage. I like to use one uh, the anything that's not used because they can get greasy when they've been used. All right, so tea bag. Now it can be the tea bag itself. It can be the tab. It can be the little wrapper it comes in any part of a tea bag any part at all a photograph can be an old photograph if you don't want to use your photographs it can be something new it can be um, something from your last trip or a funny photograph that you print out 
of someone you know. It can be anything. Um, I use my old photographs um, from many years ago that when you had to print out your photographs to see them. Um, I have all of those that I had in photo albums. I don't need those photo albums anymore because they're all digital now. So I just take and use pieces of those photographs. They don't have to be an old photograph. Book text, you know, any page from a book. It can be, you know, a little novel, a little paperback book, anything. A seed packet, going to be a little tricky during this time of the year. So that was why it's in the challenge part of it. But, you know, any kind of seed packet. Joss paper. Joss paper is Chinese. It is, I find it at the Oriental markets usually. Um, it's really thin, like rice paper. Not a lot of people have sometimes have a hard time finding finding it, so that's why it's in the challenge part of it. Um, there are many different designs, and um, it's it's fun stuff to use in collage. All right, got dot to dot papers, those kids activity books. Sometimes they're adult activity books. A dot to dot paper. Color by numbers. I love using this stuff as background stuff. Sewing patterns. Doily. Tickets of any type. Wrappers, gum wrappers, chocolate wrappers, candy wrappers, whatever you can find. Um, this is like vellum or wax paper. Came with my Chinese, um, you know, the little condiments. They put it in there so it, it didn't have food in it, so it's not greasy. Um, but that can be used for wax paper uh, or vellum. You know, you can just fudge it a little bit. Um, chopstick wrappers. You find chopsticks at Chinese places. Use the wrappers. Junk mail bits. I like postmarks. I like the little eagle that comes on some stuff. Menus, maps. You don't have to use the whole menu, the whole map, just a little bit of it. Cardboard. Um, this is drywall tape. It You find it at the, um, the hardware store. I like using it for stencils. I like putting a little bit of paint on them. Um, it's cool stuff. I, I love this stuff. And I think that is everything. Everything. So I hope this gives you some ideas, explanation of some of the stuff that I'm talking about. I hope you're having fun with it and um, stretching stretching these items to fit what you need. I'm trying not to make you go out and buy anything. Try to use things that you find around you. You know, maybe you want to um, go to a neighbor and see if they've got some stuff, uh, get the kids to, to, to do some stuff for you. But if you want to go out and buy stuff, that, that's up to you. Um, I'm not encouraging you to do that, though. All right? So I hope this was helpful. Hope you're having fun with the scavenger hunt. Thanks for watching.